Imagine that you live in a small town or a city or a village and there is a dish in that village that is being prepared by a certain restaurant or a cafe that you really enjoy. Let's say it's a steak or whatever you might want. And this is a very traditional recipe that has been done for years and years and years and it's amazing. Everybody loves it. It's very well within the history of the place and it's very well incorporated into being served and everything. Now imagine that a new restaurant opens and their whole marketing is that they're going to make the same recipe, the same dish, even better. And they're very pushy with that, trying to get a, a, as many people as possible to try it. And so they open up for the first summer season and people are interested in seeing what's happening and if the dish is going to be better. And it turns out to be absolutely horrendous. It's a shit show. It doesn't taste good. It doesn't look good. It doesn't even have the right spices. It's just a complete change from the original recipe and it's not good. So the people hate it and they voice their opinions. And while the restaurant tries to defend them, they say in the end that they're going to do better next year. So comes next summer season and the restaurant tries to push that same dish again and say, okay, this time we're doing it very well. It's going to be even better than last time. And they do manage to get some people to come back and to try it again. And it turns out to be even worse than before. And it's even more bad tasting. It's worse in every possible way that you can imagine. And meanwhile, the company is going all around saying to newspapers and local people that this is the best and they have a lot of people that liked it. And meanwhile, trying to dismiss everyone's complaints about that dish. If you haven't caught on to what I'm trying to say, this is exactly what has happened with the Rings of Power. Now, I said a couple of days ago that I will do an episode six review, but I cannot sit through the whole episode and review it because this is so horrendously done in every possible way. Episode 5 was probably the most decent episode. It genuinely had some good things in it and I mentioned that in my review last time. And to go from the most decent episode and follow up with what is probably the worst episode so far is nothing short of a deliberate insult to the law, to Tolkien, to the fans, to anyone who likes Lord of the Rings. How dare you insult me in my own home! And I say deliberate because I am quite certain and in my opinion this is absolutely deliberately done by Amazon in order to change the law, to completely try to write off Tolkien as something that doesn't matter, as an irrelevant piece of story, and to try and control the lore and say what is canon and what is not. This episode is filled with probably the worst member berries Members? that have been ever placed in a TV show. The whole season in fact, is 60 or 70% member berries that are trying to glue in the story by inputting very memorable phrases and quotes, but being spoken by people who don't have any place or any right to speak them. You should not be working. Or are put in the situation that are completely irrelevant to the quote themselves. And what is probably the most notable quote is the following. Many that die deserve life. Some that live deserve death. Who are you to give it to them? See, when this quote was spoken by Gandalf to Frodo, it was to show Frodo that life is not something that you get to choose to invoke pity on someone who has been tortured and tormented his existence by the ring. That Gollum might have done very bad deeds, but is it truly his fault or is it truly something that he had wished for. It peeks into a very tormented soul of Middle-earth that has been with the ring for half a millennia and you see a pitiful show of what was one a hobbit relative and a happy person just completely destroyed by the power of the ring. It both encapsulates the power 
of the evil that Frodo carries and what it can do to a person. And at the same time, it shows you a glimmer of hope that maybe, just maybe, even this soul can be redeemed. If you remember, when Mount Doom exploded, there were three eagles that came for to, to the rescue, not two, just for Frodo and Sam. And you know the third eagle was for Gollum. Where this here, said in this context in Tom Bombadil, is just so out of place, so idiotically placed. It changes the whole quote, but because... It is a famous quote and a lot of people have used it before and everyone knows it. Let's just place it here, let's put it, let's glue it on the scene and have it. Yeah, you remember that? That's where it came from. Yes, this is the new lore. It is absolutely idiotic. From the continuation of the bad storyline with the orcs, with Ada, with... Anita, Sauron, with everything that's going on with the rings, with the ring making, to Celebrimbor losing his mind over making the rings, right down to the perversion of the image of Feanor. And what's probably the worst thing is that the pacing issues have seemingly gone worse. In one instance, you see that the orcs are already outside the region. Then by nightfall they're attacking a region, but at the same time you haven't seen any any news of Elrons gathering the armies or someone traveling to the rescue of a region or the dwarves. As the orcs are there, you see that Anatar Sauron freely goes to Casa Doom to ask for more Mitru and then return. And you don't see any overlapping. Let's say that this has happened a few days ago or even a week ago. You just don't see anything that would suggest a consistent consistent flow of time. And even if Casa Doom is close, it will still take a few days to prepare and go back. Like it's just it's not just you can magically teleport yourself there. I mean maybe Sauron could, but still. You also don't see any mention of how the defenses of a region are set up. You, ne you never see any mention of how the, the orcs went completely unnoticed. You only see one scout troop and nobody's talking about it. And everybody's being like, okay, it's cool, we have this guy here. Mr. Weak guy who is just he's gonna take care of everything the guards are is absolutely no pressure at all right until the very end when they see actually orcs lighting up the catapults that they're gonna launch at them even though they have elf eyes and they get they can see very very far and they're very good at it this is fine and on top of that you're getting the feeling that Celebrimbor is just going to finish the rings in a couple of hours because that's how what happens the the orcs start attacking and he needs to finish the nine rings as per the show's law and it's like, okay, I'm just gonna smith a little bit, just sprinkle a little material on it, and then we're done. Okay, that's good. Even though I've been sweating all over it for weeks now. Another notable, absolutely abhorrent scene is the trial by sea, in which we were supposed to see Elendil being thrown into the sea for some sea monster who apparently represents the Valar, to judge him worthy or not worthy, and then the blind queen Miriel, who I think is his cousin, canonically, goes and takes his place, and the monster sees her, and she's deemed worthy, and she's probably queen again, or she's gaining some political power once again. And even not speaking lore-wise, this is such an idiotic scene, because you're getting thrown to a fucking sea monster. And then you're like, okay, he's gonna judge me. What if she just smelled bad or he wasn't hungry at the moment? Or maybe her clothing was not tasty and he didn't want to get uh, stomach indigestion and then threw her away. What about that? What if he's racist? That's racist! But no, a giant ancient sea monster from the sea that probably never even understood the concept of authority or something just decided the kingdom's fate just like that. Because, and we have a return to the famous quote. The sea is always right. Which is the dumbest quote ever written. And I'm very sad to see that there are people who have already tattooed it on their bodies. And what is probably the biggest sin of this show is me the meetup between Adar and Galadriel and forging an uneasy alliance. And this is where one of my theories comes from, is that Adar is Celeborn. <laughs> This theory was first 
posted to my attention by the Twitter user Azura, to which I have a deep respect, and I am almost certain that it will pan out. This will be Celeborn, who has just been changed, and he's now with a dark hair, he's mutilated, he's broken, and probably Galadriel is going to use her ring to heal them. And speaking of rings, apparently the crown that Sauron was stabbed in the beginning of the season was actually Morgoth's crown, which is canonically turned into a chain and a, something like a muzzle to when Morgoth was thrown into the abyss. However, not here. And Adar explains that they're gonna use the three elven rings to act like the Silmaril and just shine a light on Morgoth and he's going to dissipate like a bat or something. I was extremely out of mind at this point and I just had extreme difficulties to follow up that stupid story that was being presented to me. I'm not even going to mention how small the crown is because Morgoth was depicted like as this absolutely huge entity who is probably at least 20 meters tall and the crown looks like it would fit someone like me. And what's very very confusing is how Adar knows about the three rings because I don't recall anyone telling him about it. I don't recall either seeing Sauron in the episode stealing the Mitru that was needed for the rings, but apparently this is something that the showrunners don't feel the need to film or present us with. Someone just knows something. Somehow he knows this. It's the same with another scene in the episode where Arpharazon is trying to use the Palantir and he does have some visions, but as we discussed previously in the, my previous videos, the Palantirs are communication devices. They're not all seeing stones that predict the future unless you have a very powerful force that is controlling the visions and may twist the images. Other than that, they're just video conversations by ancient elven zoom meetings. And we still haven't seen if anyone else controls the Palantirs. And after this exposition, I just want to say the following thing. This is a continuing trend to just absolutely destroy Tolkien's work and try to replace it with what they're showing us. This is what they're trying to do. This is no longer accidental. This is no longer, okay, we just try to change it just a little bit to make it seem a little bit more interesting. No, this is deliberate. This is someone who sit down and says, we need to change, pervert, twist the story, the official story as much as possible and replace it with pseudo Game of Thrones lore and development at any cost. And this needs to happen. Oh, also, when you're picking the corpse and the bits and pieces that were not banned to use because we don't have a license, I want you to put every single quote you can find in whatever place you might see just because it will get people hooked on. This is their mentality. And it's a stupid mentality because it's made by stupid people for stupid reasons who have no talent and just have too much money on their hands to do whatever they fucking want. The show is underperforming by every single merit. And the 37% of people who were at the end of the first season that probably came back for the second season will have a 37% of them remaining after the end of second season and this will continue to decline. I'm still hoping that someone will see the light and say let's pull the plug and let's just end it early but I know they're contractually obligated to have five seasons so whoever can muster the courage and the willpower to watch everything and review it I commend you. I don't think I'll be able to do this anymore. This is like seeing an attempted murder because they're trying to destroy, to kill, to maim to death everything that is talking and they're trying to replace it and replace it with a stinking knockoff product that smells of rubber plastic and burnt leather all over the place and is just unpleasant to look at to see to touch to feel or to hear it growling in the distance that's what the rings of power is it's it's a very bad knockoff dish of a classical dish that we know and love and continue to eat and continue to spend three, six or nine or ten hours watching all of it and watching the three coles meal that is the Peter Jackson trilogy. We love to read the books. We love everything that is talking 
but we also do not like when that which we love is being tarnished, is being mocked, and it's being insulted in the way that Rings of Power is insulting it. And all of that will become very apparent when the news and ratings drop, when every bit of information about viewership drops, and you will see exactly how people are receiving this absolute pile of turds. Anyways, this is all I have for this video. Thank you for watching. Tell me your thoughts in the comments below did you watch episode 6 what do you think about it and what do you think is going to happen next follow me on my socials follow me on my patreon and support me there because i raise money for homeless animals and animals in shelters and click the like and subscribe button if you enjoy my content and want to see more thank you very much i have been Helzo. this was disgusting and i'll see you guys in the next video cheers and stay fresh